Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Awesome Sunday Show. Connor here. And Pat. Hey Pat, um, you know what's a company that's pretty old by now, but still makes you feel fresh and young and with you know young spirit and confidence? Comcast. No, that company makes you want to kill yourself. Fleshlight. Well, for you. <laughs> but I'm not Evan. No, yeah, you're not Evan. Um, which we call it. Uh, yeah, that company is Disney. Disney makes great movies. They've made some bad movies, but they make mostly make good to great movies. Yes. And and buy very good properties. Yeah, and buy very good properties and maintain them very well too. So we actually for this episode I have a very special guest, don't we, Pat? I would say so. Very special guest. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hey guys, I'm Anthony Dentino. This is my uh, third time on this podcast, and I'm very excited about it. Nice, nice. Good yeah, to have once you back. was individually, once was with his band Poeta. Yeah, and it, uh, it's always an honor and a pleasure to be amongst the awesome Sunday show. Well, Thanks. thank you for gracing us with Good your presence. presence. Yeah, of course. Yeah, first time was uh, Pokemon, right? Pokemon was the uh, yeah. Our, our Lord and Savior Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that thing I sent in group chat today? I did. It was uh, it was like the Mad Lib with all the Pokemon in it. Yeah, but, it was yeah. pretty funny. I liked it. It was yeah. definitely like a good six out of ten. Yeah. On Twitter, when I first went on Twitter, I was I was pretty uh, ruffling pretty hard. But Pat, you didn't tell me you saw it or liked it. Oh, uh, I probably didn't like it in the group chat, but I did read it. It was funny. Okay. Well, you should like it in group chat. Yeah, you should like your friends though. Yeah. I'm not gonna go back and like it. <laughs> I would like if you did. Well, we'd all like a lot of things. Sorry. Uh, we do like a pick comment for pick comment. You guys want to do that? Let's do horror for horror. Okay. We'll do horror for horror. Horror for horror? Yeah, horror for horror. Okay. After that. Cool. Like a certain person Joe really used to be friends with, used to do that every day on MySpace. But I won't say his name on the podcast. <sighs> yeah, Ooh. Ooh. Joe really blows in the face. We just lost so many listeners of the three. <laughs> yeah. Because we mentioned Joe Really. Down to two. <laughs> nah, Joe Really is good people. Maybe. Um, I like him. Even though he vapes. F. Yeah, he does vape. And he's got a vape tattoo. Yeah, he goes. I saw him at Vape Dojo the other day, actually. Yeah. That was crazy. He's like coming out. What were you doing at Vape Dojo? I was delivering food to Vape Dojo. I'm a delivery driver. And they ordered food and then. No, I, I was not vaping at Vape Dojo. Okay. All right. I'm just making sure. I promise. I just making sure. All right, so Dentino, you are a very big fan of Disney movies. I am. I'm a huge fan. One of my top five movies of all time is a Disney movie. What? I'm, I'm 24 years old. So. I'm I'm older than you. You are. Yeah. yeah. Nice. But we're both older than Pat. Right. Pat's yes, still, I am. Pat gets his license next month. So yeah. We're excited <laughs> for that. <laughs> oh God. Um, yes. My favorite Disney movie of all time is Hercules. Yeah? Yes. One of my favorite movies of all time. I like that movie. Yeah. It's a great movie. It's one of my favorites, too. It's a, uh, I, I don't know. It's like it's it's a weird one. That's why it's like very interesting. Like You would never see... like I would never think of a movie where you have like Greek uh, Greek mythological storyline and, and characters with obviously some comedy in it. And then the music is so out of left field because it's like Southern Baptist gospel, like choir music. It is. You're right. Um, the way they do the muses like that is, is so theatrical. It, but it works. It works perfect. And it's great because you don't see too many like um, Greek mythology stories, uh, you know, dumbed down. They're pretty like NC-17, you know, like they're pretty much all banging and killing each other. Uh, yeah. Uh, Oedipus. Especially Zeus. There you go. Especially Zeus. And then to see him as just like this great guy. And it's for kids, you know, as a kid, you're like, it's the most everything you see when you're a kid, you know, there's not too many times you get to you know god comes into like a, a heroic picture besides church and that depends on what you believe in you know mm -hmm. so i always thought that was sweet what's your favorite part of the movie Ooh, that's a rough one i really like when um he's going through and fighting all of the like um he's fighting all the different monsters like he beats up the river monster he fights that giant fish like and it's the whole like the a, montage yeah the montage good montage that and then like when he's um Oh my god, the end like when he goes through the to the underworld and he like takes Cerberus and he goes down and like saves uh Meg and comes mm. up and he's all heroic and he punches Hades out. Yeah, that part's that was amazing, great. you know. It is great. So yeah, it's cool. I like I like relate to him a lot because 
I mean, I don't at all. We have nothing in common. But, like, it's cool that he was just, like, a weak, misunderstood guy that just wants to go to where he really wants to be in life. Mm -hmm. And he gets there. And he's just, like, a crazy role model. You know, he's just a good dude. So it's cool, like, oh, like, I'm out of place. Like, I'm, you know, this weak little guy. But, like, that's cool. He became. Like, it'd be cool to become that. Yeah. I mean, and you're also a demigod. Which would be dope. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I am a demigod. That's right. My dad is a god, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Mr. Dantino is a god. Well, what do you guys like about it? Uh, it's, well, the music, obviously, but, like, that's a given. It's it's awesome. We, 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 we've listened to it in the car before. Probably have. Yeah, with Ryan Wolfgang. from Johnny Max. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, Michael Bolton does one of my favorite songs. And, in fact, I used to, the band Throwbacks I was in before has a song called Further Afield. The whole song was based off Michael Bolton's I Can Go the Distance. Like, just the whole <laughs> idea of being where you want to be, finding that perfection and that just um, that ultimate like goal to get somewhere. That's The whole song was written about like that you know it's not yeah. as it's not as 80s but it's still you know it's good yeah i like <laughs> it a lot and also too um i think uh james woods as hades is probably my favorite part <laughs> because of how, how over the top he is i, like I think that. that's my favorite role by him of all time hades and to be, all, to be uh, honest my my favorite uh james woods role is definitely video drone have you ever seen that no, but it sounds terrible. No, it's awesome. It's really good. It's not like a terrible movie. I, I really I know what you mean by terrible, like shitty movies that I yeah, like the that sci-fi like. movies. But uh no, this movie's actually really good. Like critically well received and all that. But yeah, anyway, back to Disney. Uh yeah, Hades is awesome. Like he, he like you know what it is? Like it's he's very slapstick without the slapstick. I like that. That's cool. Cuz he like with the pain that he causes himself emotionally and just out of frustration and just uh like from like Hercules himself is almost is very Looney Tunes ish. Yeah, it's it's funny. It's like very comedic. You know, like as much as you want to hate Hades doing the whole thing, like they almost don't even let you. you yeah, I mean, he's just like he could be one of your favorite characters throughout the whole mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, he's the antagonist. You because it's a movie, and like this isn't to the movie's fault. Like it's not, a, it's not a criticism. Uh, like you kind of, it's a movie. You know what's gonna happen. But that's fine because that's not what the movie's trying to push. Exactly. It's right. it they they know the story's been told a million times, so they decided to have fun with it. Right. And like I think that's a direction that's a really bold direction for a Disney movie. Just to be like, you know what? People know this. Let's just do it what you want. And like, you know what? The movie was was pretty successful actually. It wasn't as critically successful as it when it came out, but I think over time it's been much more appreciated. I think so too. I think it's one of the overtime ones. And yeah. You know, as a kid I always you know, as a kid you don't know. You just think like, oh, it's a Disney movie. Like Disney movies are in the hierarchy of, you know, they're top of the ladder. And as a kid, anyway, and you look at it, and I, you know, I realized like Hercules was. I think we were born before that movie was came out. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, we were came, really young when it came out, though. Right. So that's one of those movies. It's like, oh, Walt Disney didn't even make that one himself, and it's still like one of those. It's still one of my favorites. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. Uh, it's true too. Like you know, what we were is? six when it came out. We were six. Okay. okay. Um, it's weird too because like after Walt Disney, it's it's crazy. Like after Walt Disney died, like how what Disney has become and like you know, like the it's in it, the entity and like like you know enterprise and empire, it's whatever you want to compare it to, is like grown into. Um, and it's like it's really all his vision, like what he wanted. Like di- like the Disney name was huge before he died. Did you ever see um? Saving Mr. Banks. Yeah, that movie's amazing. I love that movie. Yeah. Um, that really, like, <laughs> Disney was still huge. Mary Poppins was the biggest movie yeah. of that year. Like, yeah, that one won, like, five awards or something like that. I yeah. Think, but that came out post World War uh, II. Yep. I think. And it, yeah, that was one of the first live action ones, and it just, like, did so well. Yeah. At Disney, you know? It did. And uh, it just. A lot of there was a lot of uh, speculation behind it because of, and like I don't know, like I don't know if the movie really touches upon this, but like it, I don't know if it wasn't the first live action, but it was their it was their most uh, expensive and their most hyped one. I know hype isn't really the proper word for like a, I guess a Disney movie, well, but anticipated, it, yeah, like anticipated, it yeah, most anticipated, yeah, anticipated, yeah. And so there was a, there was a lot that could have gone wrong. Like we think we like today we look at the Avengers. Like there's so much behind it. 
like even more that for that for the Mary Poppins, but Mary Poppins had a really you know popular book behind it that people loved, yeah. and they changed so much about that they, character. They did. Yeah, and that's what was hard for the author of yeah. the book, right, to adapt to, and to even agree to make that into a movie in, in general. You know, that was a as you see in the movie, how true, however true that the movie is actually pretty accurate yeah, up I to was, a certain extent. Right, right. It seems like um, you know they had their issues back and forth. With, yeah with adapting because so. it's you know like imagine you wrote a song that was like super personal and then like a band tried to cover it and like you knew they were going to make more money than you did and they totally changed like what you like thought right and then that changes like the whole thing you gave birth to your whole expression yeah. of that is being exploited in a certain way and you have to find a way to be okay with that mm-hmm. so it's either like you know you do it in your mind a, a good part of coping of that is uh you know millions of dollars like, yeah you know, that right? helps <laughs> so, what about you guys what's your favorite disney movies you want to go first pat sure uh well definitely hercules without a doubt um and aladdin would probably be are we counting pixar no pixar? it's separate separate okay and we already okay. Did, okay. and we already did separate. pixar true but they're t- yeah they're technically separate because pixar started before was a company before disney acquired them right yeah yes. they're not originally a disney thing all right good point um the Hercules and Aladdin go back and forth for my number one, um, but I think Aladdin is awesome. It's definitely one of the best Disney movies in a of the nineties and you know, you yeah, know that's over the like 30, 40 years or something. I'm pretty sure that kicked off the Disney Renaissance was Aladdin. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, the the cast is pretty great, but the I mean, the best part is easily Robin Williams <laughs> oh, as yeah. Genie. That, that you know the whole the rest of the movie could have sucked as and he still would have been in it and I still would have liked that movie. You can feel because how good character. it was. Yeah, Definitely. that's Robin Williams. You you sympathize, empathize, everything with that guy. Yeah, and it's crazy like how much of it was just improvised. Yeah, on the spot. Like he pretty much just they put him into a recording studio and was like, all right, here, just do whatever. And they have so many like extra uh, recordings of him just for after like that they didn't use but i mean i'd love to hear him but uh he, in his will he didn't want disney to release them or something but um not yeah but his is a like aladdin the street rat and then becomes this pompous asshole after he gets <laughs> everything he wants yeah and then realizes like wow i was an asshole and it cost me to lose you know the woman i love it's- and all this and then turns himself around and then frees the genie at the end in such a selfless move right he learns a lot about himself and like there's a lot of, i'm not i'm not a this is that type of story and but i don't think it's bad because of this like i'm not a fan of the liar like like the movie where like the liar is like it like is found out but he turns out to be a good guy like you know you know yeah like, there's it's yeah. very typical yeah. Yeah, yeah but like that movie does it so well because it doesn't it never loses you never lose track that he is still a good guy he's just making a mistake mm-hmm. and it and it finds that really good balance and like it succeeds like perfectly like I like Aladdin a lot uh, yeah the ba- I agree with that balance too yeah you know like what what somebody who's grown up poor their whole life parentless like supposed to know about being rich you have that yeah. stuff you want to be immersed in it right express it yeah him and his monkey Abu just <laughs> uh, Abu just steal you know bread they're forced to steal because they can't even make any money yeah doing anything they were good too that was cool yeah so I definitely oh, if, for Disney movies yeah I'd say top 5 Aladdin would be mm-hmm. in there it's everything I would definitely throw it in top 10 possibly pop uh, top 5 uh huh and like the my favorite song is probably Prince Ali and that oh, whole thing that where he's parading time. into the palace. <laughs> oh, that movie's so good. good. The song's great, dude. It's and fun. then the the game for Nintendo and Sega Genesis was pretty awesome too. That game's so hard. hard. It is hard, but it's is so it's good. Hard. If you can get far enough, it's it's good. Yeah, uh, Disney's one of those companies where like their movie or their game their move their games based on movies are like not half bad. There right. are bad ones, but like some of them are pretty damn good actually. Yeah, um, I agree. But you know what? Fuck the Lion King game. I was just gonna that say that game is level hard two as shit. That game, if you oh can get past God. level two, like you're not even in. You're the a champ. Game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the game is so tough, but Lion King, I would have to say, is definitely up there too. The movie is amazing. Oh yeah. Oh absolutely. I think like it's the fact that there's a war going on between mm-hmm. the lions yeah. and the hyenas is sick. That's 
I that's actually my favorite non Pixar Disney movie is The Lion King. That's awesome. It it's like I it wasn't for the longest 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 time it was Oliver and Company. Mm-hmm. Great movie. Uh, it and like I wasn't really until I watched it about last year or a year and a half ago. Where and I don't and I think the movie's still good. It's a good movie, but I liked it way more as a kid. I appreciate the music much more now, though. Mm-hmm. I think the music's fantastic in that movie. Oh, and John? Oh, uh, it's uh, Billy Joel. Oh, we're talking about Oliver and Company? Oliver and Company. I was talking about Lion King. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I thought you were still talking about Lion King. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm talking about Oliver and Company. <laughs> yeah. That was my favorite for the longest time. Um, But, like, the movie's not that... It's good, but it's not that good. But yeah, it was, Lion I King... Say it's one of my favorites, that, you know. Oliver and Company? Yeah. yeah. I, I personally wouldn't. But Lion King, yeah. Lion King is... It's one of those movies where <laughs> I like it way more now as an adult because I think it, like, kind of brilliantly teaches kids that people you kind of have to look out for yourself even like no matter what part of life you're in and it does it really intelligently like Simba Simba's all caught up in himself because he's this he's this little prince and like he grows up really quick because he wasn't looking out for himself and like it kind of teaches kids to like you know like a little step like kids that can understand like cognitively to a certain extent I think it like really teaches kids to like watch themselves you know for to 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 a thing and like that way then i think that's great because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things that can, that can take advantage of kids whether it's like certain aspects of life or whatever you know kind of makes them wake up for a bit and like not to mention the movie is great too it has a classic story yeah. and great songs and also losing a parent yeah. which is standard in Most disney movies, movies but yeah. i mean yeah disney's well, like, been doing that for a while <clears throat> Yeah, it's either you lose one parent or you lose both. But, yeah, I mean, The Lion King is the only movie I think I've ever seen that can completely rip my heart out, <laughs> shit on it, and then still make me happy at the end. Yeah, yep. like, oh, That's the really only movie I've ever seen that's able to do both. Like, it makes such a ha- – it, like, it's such a great ending that, like – Somehow the water just comes back after being gone for so mm-hmm. long, like from uh, Pride Rock. Like, not wow, I almost said Pride Rock. <laughs> um, from uh, what do they call it in the movie? Um, the thing that they stand on. Pride Rock. It is Pride Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, I don't know why. Yeah, it is Pride Rock. All right. <laughs> yeah. Whoops. So that's they got Pride Rock there. Which no, yeah. Is- and I'm, I don't know why I thought I forgot it was Pride Rock. Yeah, so they're on Pride Rock, and like you, when they're when they go back to Pride Rock to fight um, Scar, there's no water. So like when they when they go when Pride Rock is under Simba, there's just somehow like water again, like overnight. Because yeah, Evo was defeated, yeah. so life was able to come back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Before. Like they knew what they were doing. It wasn't. I think it was intentional. Of course. You know, of course. you can see that as a mistake, but I think that's just more of like, hey, like for the sake of the art. It, it's for sending a message which is fine it's a movie and like it, I think it does it good yeah they do I like the little nuances Disney does like that like they'll, they'll probably have a lot of things like that and then uh, dude another huge lesson in that is just like the Rafiki the whole running from your past thing mm-hmm. you know and facing it when he's teaching Simba like you know the past hurts but you can either run from it or learn from it and he keeps hitting him with a stick and teaching yeah. him like you can't help but think about that in your life you know you can add that to anything you do so it's really nice. I like that movie. Unreal. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, plus with Timon and Pumbaa, it shows that you could always find someone or some people to always have your back and guide you along the way. Yeah. Someone will be there for you. It, that's, and that's another good, another good lesson for kids, is to know, like, to know that they're never alone. Like, even if they have nobody, they'll find somebody. There's, yeah, there's people out there like you. Definitely. So. Yeah. Lion King's good. Um, I would say... Uh, what was Tangled, Pixar, or Disney? No, that was Disney. Yeah, it's that Disney. One, that's what I thought. I loved Tangled. I've never seen you it before. See that one? That was like a newer one. It's all right. I, I like it. It's I. It's kind of similar in plot to Frozen in, in some aspects. Yeah, I could see that. Came out first, though. Yeah. Exactly. It, it, so Frozen has a similar plot to Tangled. Yeah, I, I know, but Frozen's still better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Tangled, and... um. I don't know if I'd say it's one of my favorites, but it's definitely up there. It's a good recent one. Yeah, good recent one. And then there's the ones that just pull on your heartstrings, like uh, Dumbo and Bambi. And oh, the ones that are super ones. depressing but are still for kids? Oh, yeah, yeah dude. Amazing. 
that episode of Animaniacs uh, with Slappy the Squirrel, where um, the kid is always like sees Bambi, but it's Bumby. He's, <laughs> and he's just like, Mom, Mom, and the kid <laughs> can't stop crying. <laughs> yeah, that one's like, I can't believe they did that to kids. Right, yeah, and it's like when the dad comes to tell Bambi. First off, Bambi's the sissiest name for a for a fucking kid for a, for boy. a boy. I understand it's a deer, <laughs> but his dad is badass. His dad's name, yeah, he's sweet. So like, it's like your mother's dead, son. Like, and they they just cut away. Like that's it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's like awful. Yeah, that's a. That's why our parents grew up, like, way more badass than we are. Yeah, because their like, grandparents were like, hey, your family's dead. Like, <laughs> Stop yep. being a puss. Yeah. Yep. You got to deal with it now. You're going to work in the factory. No, we have all those those laws. But, yeah, definitely cool. So, Another one of my favorites is Tarzan. Oh, yeah, yeah so I'm underrated. So Dude, that Tarzan. doesn't get enough recognition. That one's so good. No one talks about Tarzan ever. No, which is disappointing. It's badass. I mean, you know, this little kid. Oh, and uh, aside from that, um, but this little kid, his parents get completely murdered, and then he gets raised by apes. I thought you were going to say he gets raped by apes. Yes, he totally does, probably. No, but he gets raised by apes, and, you know, the zookeepers don't even shoot the apes, so it's fine. This one. Uh, Wow. uh, (laughs) Too soon, Pat. (laughs) Nah, it's fine. Um, But you know, and then he has to again fight throughout the jungle for to survive and protect the the animals that have raised him, which is very similar to the Jungle Book, but still puts its own spin on it and does a very good job of it. And then there's the theory, which the speaking of Frozen, the creators of Frozen also created tarzan that tarzan is uh was it elsa and uh what's the other one her sister oh uh anna anna little brother that their parents Uh, were tarzan's parents that ship they left on crashed on whatever island that tarzan was born on theory well the the creators confirmed it oh really they said that was their intention yeah but how can they never bring up the little brother they didn't know about it i guess yeah yeah Oh, you probably don't know. You don't know how. Yeah, yeah she could have been pregnant, or you don't know how long they were stranded there before they died. A lot of things, They're like the t- like the chick from Tangled is in that, or Rapunzel's in that. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With, uh, the prince. So yeah, uh, but yeah, we definitely named some really. I don't. I feel. I don't like. I want to name more just real fast, just because. Like, let's do some honorable mentions oh, Be- real fast. Beauty and the Beast. I'll give that. Beauty and the Beast definitely that's is a good fair, one. Beauty. That's the. I think that's considered like. I mean, it's not. I know it's not our favorites, but like that's considered to be like the best Disney movie that's by most so people. Good, I, that's fine with that. I wouldn't say it's the best one, but it's definitely very, very good. I just think overall, like if you were to do like a like an overall rating of people's feelings, like you know, how movies on Rotten Tomatoes can get like a ninety eight percent, but they're all like reviews between like scores of seven and like eight and a half. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that's kind of, like, the take on Beauty of the Beast. Yes, like, Rot- Siskel and Ebert pretty much said it was a perfect movie. It kind of is. If you, like, if you, just by, the, by movie structure, it's perfect. Um, but, like, I've never really heard it that it's anybody's favorite Disney movie. I've never heard that either. So, like, I, I think it's one of those, it's, like, it's so universally loved that it probably is technically the best Disney movie. I know what you mean by that, yeah. Because there's always, like, that one good Disney movie that you somehow don't like, which I guess is a good kind of thing. I'm that, not big on, uh, like, Cinderella, you know what I mean? See, a lo- I agree. A lot I don't of mind the, it. It's a not lot my of those favorite. early ones, I think it was kind of, like like a band like doing their own recording for their first album like <laughs> it's not bad it's but they obviously don't have anything professional like they're they're not like they're not like they they don't have anybody to tap into them yet to get mm-hmm. to get it out right and like i feel like that's a lot of those early disney movies snow white and the seven dwarves is classic i like I it like but a lot of people one. criticize it yeah i it I, gets a lot of flack on it, it and i and to be honest it's 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 right rightfully so in some aspects um it is kind of I think, weird. Like Snow White and the Witch are the two worst parts of that movie. Yeah, the like, seven it's all dwarves. about the dwarves. Yeah, yeah the dwarves uh, yeah. Are, are excellent, and Snow White is so yes. uninteresting. And to be honest, so is Cinderella. And like, 
It's the it's the animals and the sisters that are that like Disney. It's weird that the early Disney princesses were just not interesting whatsoever. Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. Terrible. Well, those are all, um, you know, those are all tales based off of like, like the, Snow White was a tale before it was a Disney yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they're was adaptation. ad- so adaptations as tales, but still. Yeah. I mean, so I get the fact that like, you know, they're not and they're not bad movies. Right, but like it's just a shame that the main character is like not kind like, of just bland. Yeah, You're very not bland. Exactly rooting for that character. The only though. the only really old Disney character, like main character that I think like stands out to this day and is still like just as interesting is Alice from Alice in Wonderland. Oh yeah, obviously amazing. And it's funny mm-hmm. too because all those movies we just mentioned before were praised by critics. People never saw anything like that before they said. And then Alice in Wonderland was killed by the critics when it first came out. Like when it very first came out. And now I think the opposite had happened. People get flack for like the, the, the classic classic yeah. Disney movies and like they hold Alice in Wonderland in like the spotlight. And like I'm kinda like that too. It's I mean it is the best Alice in Wonderland adaptation. Oh uh, especially compared to the Tim Burton ones. Oh, and it's the most yeah. recent one through the looking glass or whatever, even though that's like a that bombed continuation. Yeah. Um, not surprising, but, uh, like it's really, really good. And to take a story that weird and make it into a successful and well done kids movie is pretty impressive. I agree with that. Totally. It teaches kids to like, kids look, definitely look at things different from that movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's not your typical structured, like, oh, good, bad guy. You don't even know like who she's meeting if they're good or bad the whole mm-hmm. time. I, it, you don't that's know what I love about it. For, you don't even find your antagonist till like the, you know, your main antagonist till the very end being the queen. Like yeah. the final boss. Exactly. Like, and it does seem like she had to conquer like each one of these situations to get to that final one. And then like, she didn't even learn a lesson, you know, she was just curious mm-hmm. and then woke up and was like, oh wow, like that's what happened, you know? Yeah. Very low pressure situation, very like, just interesting the whole time look at this world what is going on Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. that was cool because it's a world you're not familiar with you know you're familiar with all these other worlds for the most part it's pretty much your house but like this is like you can't even relate to this one no you can't and but like what i like about it too (laughs) is that like this girl goes on like weird silly it goes to weird silly places and she's scared but like you get a sense like the way i feel about alice in wonderland is Every time she leaves a new area, like whether she's talking to the Cheshire Cat or like the Mad Hatter or like what's a couple other characters, um, well, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, Tweedledee and, and Tweedledum, and Caterpillar and stuff. She leaves with this like with a little sense of understanding. That's a good. Every point. time, and like you kind of get used to these characters. Now these characters that are strange and scary are are lovable. Right. Uh, you, when you think back, you like, oh, dude, I love the Cheshire Cat. Like, yeah, I love yeah, yeah. the Mad Hatter. Like, when at first you're like, who the fuck are these people? It's unknown and it's scary. Mm-hmm. And like. And- I like to again. Like I think that's a message to kids. Like what, you, like what, what? You, I think you, what you were kind of going upon is, you know, new places are scary, but when you look back, you have a lot of fun. You have a lot of fun. That, yeah, right, it's you're gonna think about that. You're right, and like you can name parts of that movie like they're way more interesting than like every part of like like I can't name every part of Beauty and the Beast, but I've seen it a few times. I can't name every part of like. Cinderella or, or Snow White, they're not all as interesting as each part of Alice in Wonderland is. And I don't think that makes one movie better than the other, but I just think, like, that's interesting. Like, it, that movie's broken up into sections, like, because it's like the book was like short stories. Yeah. You know, where she goes through. So that's cool that in a movie, like, no, you can pick that up from any part in the movie and it'll be interesting. Like, oh, that's that part, that's that part, right. that's that part. And it's going to get to the end. It's, it's a cool. very good point. <laughs> so I like that. That must have been some acid trip, man. <laughs> like, to write that? Yeah. It would have been cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> that's another classic. I'm going to one that was, is very, actually very, very dark and very creepy is Pinocchio. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. That's my dad's favorite. Like, it's really good. But, man, some of that stuff is, like, dark as hell <laughs> and very creepy especially when you're watching it as a young kid I'll admit I haven't seen Pinocchio in quite some time but I haven't at least over 10 years maybe like 10 to 12 years it's a little been longer since I was a kid too man yeah yeah like I haven't seen that in a while like I can't really properly talk about that movie because I it's probably since I it was before I was 13 probably since last time I saw, I saw that movie mm-hmm so I kind of have to watch it again, but like I remember, it, I remember actually not liking it because of like how like 
I think I would probably like it more now. Yeah. But like it was before I started really getting into like horror movies and like when I was like when I was started like like late 13 14 when i was like i love horror movies and i started watching them i probably would have liked pinocchio more if i saw it then than i did as a kid i could see that yeah yeah like, i was always into horror movies but like more of like the classic ones it wasn't until like the, like the dark and twisted ones when i was like like you know like angsty teen like 16 before you, know? you became dark and twisted in your own head. yeah <laughs> right yeah man just, there's just so much misunderstanding man <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's what's like I think something we got to bring up at some point during this conversation because we're talking about Disney movies is the game Kingdom Hearts. How mm. instead, if we don't want to talk about the right. whole thing, how like they just showed like the most heroic, like relatable badass part of each of those games, and like you know, use them embellished upon them. Yeah, and I think I think of Sora as a Disney character. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. And I like. Uh, like if I love that game, I actually love that game for the same reason why I love the Hobbit books and the Lord of the Rings books and and, and movies, um, is because the whole theme of it is friendship, and like like bond and like and like bonds of like between friends and like and like relationships of like people that you haven't seen in so long but like come back to and like but like they're still there, and I think Kingdom Hearts like that is the that is the theme of Kingdom Hearts because like every time like it's all about relationships throughout that whole entire game. Yeah. And that's why I think the biggest strength of the game is, yeah, the story is like super convoluted, but like, it's not about the story. It's about who Sora meets. It, yeah, it, it really is. Um, the story is great and it's there. That's one of those games that it's about, like a lot about the gameplay doing mm-hmm. stuff. You know, it's, it's one of the most fun gameplays I've ever played through in a game. Yeah. I love it. And um, the adventure is great, but I think it really is just letting you explore Disney in your own way. And yep. I think that's like one of the coolest things they could have done because like as you grow up with Disney as you're a kid you try not to outgrow it you, most of the time you don't sometimes you do and this was just like hit that audience when you're a teenager and you don't want anything and then like it's like nah Disney's cool again like, mm-hmm. this is actually a badass game yeah. like it's got some dark stuff going on there like, the only part I hated was the <laughs> Little Mermaid where you have to dance that was the second one I thought that was the first that was the second one and uh and the Little Mermaid world is in both worlds, is in both games. It, yeah. But you dance in the second one. Okay. And, um, yeah, the second one was is cool, but, um... I like the second one a lot more. You do? I think the second one is definitely... Because when that, like, the first one when it came out, I, like, I still liked Disney, but I wasn't super... I kind of grew out of Disney for, for a little bit. You became too cool? Yeah, that's... Well, that's kind of, like, was it? I was like, I was like, I'm too old for Disney movies. Like, I still knew they were good. So when I played the first game, I was like, "This game is great," it, but it's a Disney game. Like mm-hmm. I was like, "Ah." When the second one came out, I still had that attitude, but like then there was Tron in it. Yeah, yeah there was Tron. You know, that's right. And um, like there was just like better, like the like the nobodies were cooler. Like it made Disney pretty badass. And then like I I wasn't really a big Final Fantasy fan at the time, and like I'm still like kind of <laughs> getting there, but like. You know, I didn't know who these characters were, like Cloud and Sephiroth, but I was like, these characters are cool. Like, I that's what got me into the game. Yeah, those were my like Final Fantasy. I followed for a while. I played seven, eight, and ten, and then um, there was just Disney, and then like, oh man, bring those two together, like that's so cool. Yeah, it's weird. Disney, like now that I think about it, Disney has this like uncanny ability to just take two things you never think flow together. And make them work. Yeah, they mesh and adapt that stuff so well. They're such a good at hitting their audiences. Mm-hmm. I love that about them. Yeah, can't wait for Kingdom Hearts three. Yeah, whenever. coming out soon. Yeah, <laughs> whenever that comes out. They showed that like two or three E threes ago. And it's it, been at least three years. It's, yeah, yeah, and they just haven't showed it since. Yeah, which I knew this was gonna happen because Final Fantasy seven remake and Final Fantasy fifteen. It's all the same people as uh, right. on top of Kingdom Hearts three. Right. They right. probably started Kingdom Hearts three and like let's Definitely. announce it, and they're like shit. We have two games that haven't even come out yet. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know which one's gonna be for, uh, Final Fantasy seven remake will not be for a while. I'm assuming. It, well, it's episodic too. Yeah, it's gonna be so annoying. I like that. honestly I hate episodic releases like that. Like with the Telltale games, they do it. Now they're gonna switch once the games come out because they have two or three games coming out this year. They're going to do it monthly instead of every like three months that they have been doing it. That's good. It's still annoying, but at 
you know, if you're going to release it episodically, especially like several months apart, I'm just going to wait until it's all on one disc or something. Yeah, and then just play it all the way through because then you just... (laughs) You'll either lose interest in it or forget where you are. Forget, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to hit you as hard not playing it. Exactly. It's better to play it, like, cohesively because then, you know, especially if there's supposed to be moments that are supposed to emotionally impact you. You're right. You're, you're going to be, like, the, yeah, you know exactly. I mean? So that's that's what's annoying. And, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's obviously a huge thing for Final Fantasy fans. The remake of Seven has been, like, a myth, and it's been said it can't be done for so many years. It won't be done. People... But after this remake, should it be done? I personally am, like, a little against it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I didn't want it to be this way. But, nah. you know, I'm way too old school. I'm the guy that would have been happy with, like, the same exact game, a little extra stuff, and, like, different graphics. But just better <clears> graphics. <throat> and I would have been fine. Mm-hmm. But, like, today's standards, like, it, it would be way too slow. I'm assuming relative to a gameplay release today, especially like what it's capable of. Exactly, that's what people. I so I get it, but it's just personally, nah, a little bumped. Yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> but yeah, Kingdom Hearts three, uh, 2020 probably. It, like, if we're lucky, yeah, if we're lucky. I mean, it's been delayed like probably ten times in three years. Oh yeah, to be absolutely. honest, like which is insane. And you would think like, I know remakes especially to bring them onto new uh, new generation of consoles is a good idea because you'll get people you'll bring the people who played the originals back and then you'll bring new people who missed that game yeah to get it but like go for you know if you have a property like Kingdom Hearts or something like a new original IP even if it's a sequel to something do that first like even though they're going to make more revenue to be able to put into Kingdom Hearts 3 you know filter it back in there but still like you you are kind of like Kingdom Hearts 3 Give them Kingdom Hearts you're kind of like cheaping out on the fans like you're kind of just like especially with turning them off turning them off too like like Kingdom Hearts 365 slash set, whatever like I don't know I know what you're talking about yeah it's yeah or like uh, like Dream Drop, Drop Distance and like I played one spin off the one for Game Boy Advanced and it was good it was alright but I don't know. I, it wasn't the main series, and like supposedly yeah. you understand the story more if you play the other spinoff you games. You do, but it's just like ah, I didn't want that. You know? Yeah, I'm happier with leaving it to my imagination and reading like fan theories about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, like getting an answer or like having like a backstory with comics, or just something. include the whole story in the game. <laughs> like I don't go to a restaurant. <laughs> yeah, I don't go to a restaurant, eat, <laughs> take a bite of my burger at one table, and go to the other table to dip my French fries. Like just give it all to me at one just table. Give, yeah, explain like, mm-hmm. that through. I mean, make it a make it side quest make it secret backstory stuff you know? yeah it, like it's just i don't know if you had to but yeah so that was cool so disney in that that's the first time you see disney being really badass like you realize it when you're playing it and you're a teenager playing video games like you i loved it yeah so I, I was in sixth grade and i remember anticipating it and just loving every second of it it was yeah it was great and the music in that game not just the disney like uh, music it's some of like the original music in that game is great too um like the song that goes like it's like hikari something like i gotta hear it again but i remember like the the intro theme like the that's it silky and clean intro theme or whatever it would no it was like a it was almost like a dubstep oh oh i know what you're talking about i'm I'll show you the song later but like you once you hear it you you'll understand what i'm talking about yeah that would be cool yeah because so cool. you and I, <laughs> yeah, I don't, that song is actually pretty good. Yeah, it's a good movie. So I, I guess talk about music, um, and like we can obviously like when we're talking about music, you know, bring up the movies around that music that we love. Um, See the title for this? Yeah. All right. Before we <laughs> get into fourth that, Sharknado coming out. Yeah, fourth Sharknado. I still haven't seen the third one, but the first two are great. But the title <laughs> for the new one is The Fourth Awakens. Yeah, that's a great subtitle. That, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Good for them. Yeah, man. Good. I, I, I'm glad that Sharknado is successful. Good for them. Um, yeah, so music. Um, you're the special guest, uh, Anthony, so. Sure. Um, I guess, so favorite um, songs within movies? Yeah, or, or just your favorite Disney songs in general. You'd be like, hey, I like all Phil Collins songs from Tarzan. I have to say, okay, I would definitely say Strangers oh, Like Me by... Phil Collins. That's why I said it because I knew you. Huge <laughs> Phil Collins fan, and obviously, um, not not just biased. Like that song is very. Uh, I you know I want to know if there's other people like me. I want to know mm-hmm. if there's people out there that are going through the same thing I'm going to. 
there's no one like Tarzan in the whole world. So all he's trying to do is like, why am I different than these apes? And then Phil Collins wrote a song to just capture that emotion. Mm -hmm. And I loved that. So I'd say that is tied with I Can Go the Distance from Hercules because I, like I, I mentioned earlier, heavily influenced that. Totally believe in the positive message behind the just get up, go grind, and do what you got to do kind of thing and go out there and get it. Yeah. So That's a good thing to get behind. Yes. I definitely like the... I, I think the uh, the Tarzan song um, by Phil Collins. What's a, it? Uh, Strangers like me. That's that's the one he did for that. Song. That's the one. He, okay. Yeah. Um, it's it's I like that because Phil Collins takes the movie seriously. So the song coming yeah. out came out really good. Exactly. Like when he, I think when he wrote that song, he probably wasn't like, oh, it's a kids movie. I'll write whatever I want. Like mm -hmm. do 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 Like no, like. He probably read the screenplay to a certain extent. And was like, "This is really good." And took, I yes, and he took it seriously. He yeah. took it to heart, and like it comes out in the song. And he did it as if like he was just writing a song the way he would write a song. And this is my influence for it. Mm -hmm. And that's where he, that's where it came. So I love that. <laughs> so there's that. Yeah, Elton John's music too in, in Lion, Lion King. King is so iconic. Excellent. Yeah, it it is iconic. Didn't. It was Oscar nominated. I don't know if it won. I don't know if it won either, but it was not, and it was Oscar nominated. But it's just funny, like Elton John, like I'm a bitch and I'm in and I'm better than you, like is <laughs> singing like The Lion King. But I don't know. It's just like sometimes I'll think of stuff like that. Like Phil Collins, at least makes sense. Like none of his songs are like super rock and roll. They're like poppy and like catchy, and some of them are like pretty serious. And like Elton John, not that he doesn't have that music, but he's very rock and roll. Like I can party too. Yeah, he's uh, that's what I liked about it. So. You hear that in Lion King, and you're like, oh, man. Mm -hmm. You connect with it. Yeah, it's really good. Love it. Really, really, really good. Great. Like, even the even some of the, the bad Disney movies, um, or ones like, there's not, there's, I don't, I can't think of a Disney, well, there's Chicken Little. That movie's, like, not good yeah, at all. Yeah, not a Chicken Little fan at all. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any music in that movie? I don't remember. I forget. Movie. That was, that might have been the most forgettable movie I've ever seen by Disney. Um, I don't even think I've ever seen it. Yeah, it's it's awful. Like I, I I can't even tell you anything about it. <laughs> like, I just little. I don't remember anything. I just yeah. Um, I guess I don't want to say bad. No, yeah. There's there's some there's some bad Disney movies. Uh, like what's that one mouse movie, The Great Mouse Detective? Yeah, there's The Great Mouse Detective. There's um, well, there's Winnie the Pooh. It's amazing music. Yeah, but you didn't like the movie. What? Oh, oh! I thought I was saying it's just a like a bad Disney movie with with good music. But oh, let me uh, think. I keep. Whew, let me. That's hard. I can't really think of like a. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of one. No, definitely not. Yeah, but but also, but going back to Winnie, I, I was about to say, yeah, Winnie Winnie the Pooh. That does have good music. Hundred yeah. Acre Woods is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It's so peaceful and like that's where you are. That setting's perfect. Then there's the Heffalump song, and then yeah, the Tigger yeah. song, so. <laughs> I love Winnie the Pooh, man. That's such a good. That's another movie I haven't seen in a long time. There's a bunch of movies, and I like. I've seen like a few. Like I've seen the Piglet movie, the Tigger movie, uh, it's, it's like the original movies back with him, the Heffalump movie. There's a Halloween movie he's in. That, like mm -hmm. I, I just love Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. <laughs> so sick. Oh, you know what? So sick. I you know what classic? <laughs> you know what classic Disney with cl uh, movie with classic songs that like we just haven't messaged yet. Message. Uh, Whatever mentioned, mentioned, can't talk tonight. Um, is the Jungle Book? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah clearly the, that some of the songs tonight are iconic. I want to be like you. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. and they and they. It, I want to be like you was done pretty damn well in the live that's action like movie. One of yeah, my it is. favorite. I, I like. It's like wow, that's a great song. Yeah, I like that movie now more. The remake. I like the remake now more in hindsight that I did when I first saw it. Not that I didn't like it when I didn't see it. I was like, oh, it's good. Like, I like it. It wasn't, like, fantastic, but the, the CG was good. But, like, when I look back, I was like, oh, wait, I, I do really like this part. It's, yeah. it's kind of how I feel about, felt about Hercules. Like, I've, like, grown to really like it more and more. And, like, but obviously Jungle Book was a little faster because that movie just came out. But, yeah, the Jungle Book, the, even the cartoon, like, great songs. Bare Necessities. Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <clears throat> Hearing Bill Murray sing that in the new one was actually pretty great. That was good. It was just a, a little bit more special because it was Bill Murray. Yep. I think. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think the original Jungle Book movie and the new one are great. And like the, the yep. new one is 
extremely impressive because everything except for Mowgli was CGI, but it was done so well that it's like yeah, pretty very much realistic. Yeah, it wasn't distracting either at all. No, you know, it not at bad. all. You weren't like, oh, I wish that wasn't there. You just that's how they did that character. That's yep. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah, the CG. What like I like when I first saw that movie, I was just kind of like, oh, like they they they're adding CG to like a forest background or whatever. But like it was all CG, like all literally inside. everything so was it CG. Fit. It fit in place. Uh, and then there was like a pool in it too that was used for the water. That that and okay. Mowgli are like the only things that were in CG. Yeah, it's so crazy that they like that they did that, and so I guess what it pays off being like one of the richest movie studios ever <laughs> yeah yeah it's a good point yeah so that's disney i'm trying there's definitely like other disney movies like there's tons that we're just not naming right now that we're just, there's a very goofy list. movie oh goofy movie. yeah i movie. was gonna say that too. i like that movie <laughs> it's a great movie it's I like it. it's weird it's like the adam sandler comedies of disney movies <laughs> uh, it's, it's the good adam sandler comedies. <laughs> yeah no absolutely yeah the, the the 1990s early 2000 adam sandler comedy like yeah, that was funny yeah you know, like the big daddies or the happy gilmore yeah not not now not freaking ridiculous six your friend no that's uh, your friend and, uh goof troop right that was the other one Yes. Or was that the show? It might have been the, the show. The duck movie. Yo, how did I not mention this? Fox and the Hound, top three of the favorite Disney movies. Oh, oh wow. man. I mean, With, you... uh, we're the best of friends, that mm. song. Unreal. Talk Great about song. a depressing ending to a movie. Yeah, Holy crap. That's real right there. That's a real, Jesus. real movie. I love that movie. Yeah, that movie was pretty damn good. And <laughs> also, um, Lady and the Tramp, too. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that one's another like classic. Yeah, and I, uh, just and it's iconic just for that one scene when they're sharing the spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Like that, I think that out sh- that is the most known ooh. part from that movie. You are, and rightfully so. It's the best. It's the best scene. Um, but there's other great stuff too. Like the Siamese cats are are, are yeah. I like that. All. Great. Yeah, everyone sings that song all the time. Yeah, and Siamese. Um, and, um, and it's just, I think it's a good movie overall. I think, like, how we, you know, how we were complaining about when Disney first came out, like, yeah, the movies are good, but they are not, like, the main characters were unfortunately just not interesting. I think it, I think it's around this time where Disney started, like, honing their skills when it came to character development. Oh, Tramp was super interesting. Yeah. You know, and ladies, mm-hmm. like, all reserved and stuff like that. And then you have, like, Todd and Copper, the best friends. Like, you can relate to that with anything growing oh, up. You yep. know what I mean? Absolutely. And then, like, you guys grow up and go your separate ways and life gets in the way. Like, however you look at it, any argument, whatever, it's just you get pulled apart for some reason, but you know you'll always be there for each other. Mm-hmm. Love that movie. It's, yeah, it's pretty damn good. How about All Dogs Go to Heaven? Yeah. That's not a Disney movie. It's not? No. Don I Bluth. Assume? I didn't think it was... Disney, but I love that movie. Yeah. No, I, I just assumed it was Disney. No, it's, it's a great Disney movie. movie. <laughs> Don <laughs> Bluth, shout out to all dogs go to heaven. Yeah, that, honorable non-Disney <laughs> mention. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, Don Bluth worked for Disney, and then he then he pretty much flipped the bird and said, "I'm doing my own shit." And then we got Land Before Time, American Tale. Um, I'll take Land Before Time. Yeah, uh, The Secret of Nim, amazing. Yeah, great movie. Uh, and then all dogs go to heaven, and also the Dragon's Lair video games too was Don Bluth. Mm. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Oh. Okay, never mind. This is different. Nope, not Disney. Never mind. What's not Disney? Uh, honorable non-Disney mention is How to Train Your Dragon. Oh, yeah. DreamWorks. That, both of them were awesome. I watched those movies back to back like that one day. was Disney, dude. That you was... told me for years to watch them. Because I still haven't seen them. that too. No, I, I didn't. I've never seen them. Oh, you haven't? Oh, no. no. Who, who else told me that then? Now. It has to be Cass. It was because I knew it was two people. You and maybe Cassidy. I don't know. Are so, the first, second one's even just as good. The second well, one's better. What pisses me off is yeah. I think yeah, it's I think better. So Netflix has the second one on, but they don't have the first one on. The, the it, first one was on On Demand. Yeah, when I saw HBO. It. It might still be on there. I'm pretty sure it's HBO or Showtime On Demand. The first it's one. definitely not HBO because I was looking at HBO movies today. I Stars. You stream it. I stream yeah, I'll, I'll probably <laughs> you know? stream it. Yeah, it's easy. But anyway, so yeah, that we'll do a DreamWorks podcast another day. I don't think I don't remember any songs in that either. So yeah, we could do a different, yeah. different one. But, so I guess because there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of good DreamWorks cr- classics, dude. Like the Kung Fu Panda movies are like my. I think are yeah. a lot of the uh, those movies are better than most Disney movies. Shrek two, right? And Shrek. the Shrek, Shrek two is. Incredible. Awesome. Shrek 2 is awesome. Different pod. That, you, that'll be the next podcast you come on. DreamWorks movies. Down with that. Definitely. Um, DreamWorks animation, I should say. Yeah. Sure. 
Because there are DreamWorks live action movies, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Yeah. I don't pay attention to them if there are. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah Disney, just, Disney's legacy is unreal, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, literally, that's why DreamWorks is DreamWorks, because they tried to out Disney Disney. You know? Like, that's how much big... That's how big of an influence Disney is. It did well. I mean, they didn't... They didn't... I, don't know, I wouldn't say one's better, but... Oh, I would say Disney's better overall, but... Uh, yeah, of course, of course. But, like, DreamWorks is just still... But, like... Even no. even so, like it wasn't. In, well, <laughs> DreamWorks can prove that you can have that people can respect animation that's not Disney, like for for movies. Um, right. Like even gar- even cartoon movies that were really good that came out didn't do that well commercially because it wasn't Disney. Hence, like like Secret of Nim and uh, like Land Before Time, which are classics and great movies, did not did not make as near the money as a Disney movie did because there's just the marketing and the fact that it just wasn't the Disney name and to, to an animated a good point. The fact movie. that like, just cause it's not Disney doesn't mean it sucks. Right. That's a yeah. good name that they're making. Exactly. And I, a lot of those movies are, are great. And, uh, and like that's changed now. DreamWorks has like respect because of the Shreks, the Kung Fu Pandas, the how to train your dragons. Um, right. so, but like, for the good part of like 60 years disney was literally if you didn't your cartoon movie didn't make money unless it was disney yeah you're monopolizing right there yeah i can you think of an animated movie for that from like the 30s 40s 50s and 60s that was successful that wasn't disney well there was like when did the black cauldron came out that was a good movie and that was probably like the 70s or 60s yeah i liked that movie. there's a sword in the mm-hmm. stones too i think that is disney that is disney yeah sword in the stone black cauldron was not Disney. oh it wasn't no i don't think so the so. lord of the rings cartoon movies were the first one was pretty successful though okay yeah, yeah. but that movie also isn't that good it's like pretty that bad all. yeah <laughs> it's pretty pretty I did bad i not like that one <laughs> uh, another Disney movie that I don't know why it took me this long to think of that I think is one of Disney's funniest, The Emperor's New Groove. Oh, That's yeah. another like '90s comedy Disney movies. Yeah, Co- like that. That is like the Adam Sandler Disney movie, uh, along with the Goofy movie. And Emperor's that's, New Groove is amazing. It's yeah, so good, so funny. John, well, I feel like John Goodman's in a lot of Disney movies. Probably, like he seemed like he portrays the disney persona very yeah it's well. one of the most contemporary like disney movies i feel like you know, yeah it just it's very modern it's got all those actors in it and yeah and it's not david even dated spade. because a lot of them are still big today yeah david spade patrick yeah. warburton crunk that guy yeah patrick yeah, warburton yeah. who's in like every seth He's mcfarland thing brothers. ever yeah, yeah venture brothers he voices a ton <laughs> he of stuff he does boyfriend like, on He's seinfeld Ted, the Ted movies. Yeah. yeah he's uh you know he's done a couple of sitcoms and stuff and like david spade is still pretty big i mean he's still doing work uh not necessarily great work anymore his but stand-up is still pretty successful like supposedly he just know. doesn't do it that he's much. on bill marley the other time yeah. <laughs> bill Marley sucks but yeah, he does suck but like <laughs> i only watch it because of david speed and john goodman is never not good even when he's in crap john goodman's still the man oh yeah there, john good f man he's Goodaf, man. john goodman's the man he's in a really bad movie i forget the name of it so it pisses me off but he like the whole british royal family dies and he, the only living relative is john goodman and he's an american it's like see, the, one of the worst movies i ever saw yeah, that sounds still, terrible but, but i sound but he's great in it yeah exactly. he sells it somehow i don't know that's awesome <sighs> yeah if i was gonna make a disney movie i would definitely cast john goodman in something. yeah anything in anything he, he, he he's he's in a he was in that he was in uh the artist the, the french silent movie mm-hmm. that won best picture and he was like pretty good in it yeah so yeah he, i don't know he's just an everyman actor and he was great in uh inside lewin davis okay but going back to disney uh yeah uh, emperor's new groove was like laugh out loud hilarious yeah i agree definitely it still holds up like it i don't think it dated at all like yeah, I think it's aged pretty well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Compared to some the Disney movies, the scene where Kronk is just like doing his own theme music, yeah, like, he's like sneaking around, gets me every time. That was good too. I like. Uh, was the Last House on the Left a Disney movie? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, that's that's the movie where they literally like rape somebody. Right. That's not Disney. I mean, maybe. No. Okay. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll fact check and we'll get back. Yeah. Okay. I think that was one of their experimental I, you've, ones. You, you've seen that movie before? No, I haven't. I oh. Haven't. <laughs> Just trying to think of the most ridiculous movie I could think of. Yeah. Oh, no. I came up with. Yeah, that... 
Are you talking about the 60s version or the remake? I didn't even know there were two. Oh, okay. Yeah, just the remake. They're both pretty bad. And then Amityville Horror, another honorable Disney mention. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, I would definitely say Straw Dogs was in, is another great Disney movie. Yeah, <laughs> Contracted. With the Cranks. Wow, you have Christmas with the Cranks up there. That really pisses me off. Yeah, I think he, he has two. He left it here. That's he has two <laughs> Christmas with the Cranks DVDs, I'm pretty sure. It's terrible. Is Master of Disguise up there? No, I, mean, I will Barry never own that movie. Probably is. He does. It's just like tucked under his bed. That's it's funny because people know how much I hate that movie. Like no, because it, <laughs> no. Even, even everybody at Best Buy knows you love it. It's your favorite movie. I know. <laughs> well, one of. One of. Honorable mention. Pat actually enjoyed Batman vs Superman. No way. It's you love it. You pre-ordered five copies of the Ultimate Cut Blu-ray. That's the most ridiculous lie. Like you couldn't even think of one that was believable. Like, listen, you have two Christmas with the Cranks DVDs. That's not too far off. Do I really though? I'm pretty sure you do. I only see one up there. Crocodile Dundee. I'm pretty sure you do. Probably under your Wii U. You have two of some terrible, terrible movie that you love. Dogma, great Disney movie. Oh yeah, that'd go really well. At oh, the, Although uh, it might. Radio is no, a great Disney movie. <laughs> That's a Disney movie. No, it's not. Oh. <laughs> Idiot. I don't know. Disney releases some shit that I wouldn't re- realize it was Disney. Well, here you know what I was thinking about. I was thinking about Disney the other day actually. Remember in Jessica Jones, where Luke Cage rails the hell out of Jessica Jones? Yep. Technically, that's a Disney production. Kind of. It's a division of Disney. That's a it's a part of Disney. Property. Like when you watch those two bang, it's Disney. <laughs> Just think about it. It's Disney. Okay. It's Disney. It's Disney. I will. Kind That's of. what he stood for. But then again, you look at like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Those are on ABC, which is a Disney property. So yeah. Technically Disney. I mean, if you want to get into technicalities, then yeah, you could do it like that. Yeah. I, I like technicalities. There we go. But uh. Yeah, does anybody have any final words about like Disney, Walt Disney himself, productions, movies, honorable mentions? I'm glad that Walt Disney was frozen and is now um, half mechanic, and he's going to come back and defeat um, the Nazis, right? I think alive. that'll definitely happen. Okay, cool. Then yeah, that's that'll what I thought happen. was going on. Something else you should talk about, how good the Disney Channel used to be and how crap it is now. No, I didn't, I didn't like uh, the Disney Channel. I thought there was some good stuff on. I there. thought it was crap back then, and it's better now. <laughs> Me too. Really? Yeah. 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 Get the I fuck was, out. There were some good shows on there. The the Goofy <laughs> Show, Goof Troop, or whatever it was called, and then like, well, there was uh, a, the ba- Mickey uh, House of Mouse or whatever. Before that, it was good. Like when it was Ducktales, uh, Chip and Dale Rescue. Yeah, Rangers. when we were younger. Yes, those yeah, shows exactly. Were sick. But that was Darkwing also, Duck. Darkwing yeah. Duck was great. Yeah, Dark but then Dark after Dark. that, with like the Kim Possibles and like all those like shitty cartoons too. Now it's a lot better. I have not seen Gravity Falls yet, but I really Gravity want to watch Falls it. is probably the only good thing on Disney Channel. But then also, even too, that's they have all the Marvel property cartoons now, like the event, like the uh, right. Avengers Assemble, Amazing Spider Man. Marvel's animation's not that good. Like their animated stuff is not that good. I be honest. kinda like it. Spectacular Spider Man was great. Yeah, that was, but like the last couple of Spider Man series they did, like one out of four were good, like twenty five percent probably. And then the Guardians of the Galaxy one, I've only seen two episodes, but that's pretty good. Yeah. I think it's I think it's good. Yeah, D C animation is much better. I but that's also has the advantage of not being tied down to the Disney Channel. So like like they can get away with certain things like in Young Justice like you know Artemis and um, and uh, Wally West like they're not just like Tiki boyfriend and girlfriend you know they're pretty serious you know like that's not really like kid, like some of the stuff is like they do like might not be so not kid friendly they're not like banging on the show but like you know like, there's a lot of seasons that I'm banging you ever seen them yeah totally it's in the special edition Blu-ray <laughs> yeah. But like you know, it's a little, it's a more serious relationship. Like you, you wouldn't see that in a Marvel cartoon on the Disney Channel. You know, that's why I think Young Justice. Like I, I agree. The, the DC is better, but I still like the Marvel. It's fun. It's a lot more fun. Mm. Whatever. Right. Disney Channel original movies. Some of those used to be great back in the day. I never liked no. the High School Musicals. Yeah, me neither. But there were some. You good just admitted ones. you liked them. No, I said some of them. That's were what great I heard, back right? in the day. I don't know. I think you guys should fight. I will fight Connor yeah. to the death. Yeah. I mean, the first time I ever met you, you wanted to watch Camp Rock. I have no idea what that is. 
Okay. Keep okay. pretending. No, I really don't. What's uh? <laughs> I think. Okay. That Do you really not know what it is? No, I don't know what it is. Oh my god! Do you live under a rock? Get it? Not camp, camp rock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you can look it up later because I'm not showing you. Because you might like it. <laughs> yeah, totally. But yeah, that's all I have to say about Disney. Yeah, Disney, 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 Disney. Disney. All I have to say Disney. about my friend Disney. Denny's. Denny's. Rest in peace, Denny's. Ground Zero. <laughs> They're still no, alive. No, Damien wasn't there, uh, so it's right. not. Damien didn't blow up Denny's. If he did, he'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that concludes this podcast for today. Um, you know, guys, we love to hear what you think in the comments below. Uh, but please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And uh, also follow us, our um, show Rate on Twitter. Write us on iTunes. Oh, yeah. Write us on iTunes. Good good segue in there. Thank you. Um, I know. Also, we're, all, we're, on, uh, we're on Podbean as well. Um, let us know in the comments what you love about the Disney movies, Disney movies you may have not liked, or one that really touched you and is your favorite movie. You can also follow the show's Twitter account at Awesome Sun Show. Um, and you can follow our individual Twitters. I'm at Leston Connor. I'm at Rick Pat Mick. And I'm not allowed to have the internet because my parents said so. But if you guys want to talk to me, you guys can. I'll give you my parents' number, and then you can just ask for me. What's your parents' number? Um, we'll we'll talk about that later. Okay. Just, yeah. just make sure you ask for Dentino. Yeah. Don't say which Dentino. Exactly. Just Dentino. And you'll find me. Okay. Cool. So yeah, that's about it, everybody. Um, this is a midweek episode, so have a great whatever day we upload this. Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, have a great Thursday, and uh, we'll see you Sunday. You should also, if you haven't listened to the previous episode that Dantino was on, uh, the Pokemon one and the Poeta one. The Poeta one was great. Was great. One of our most listened to ones. And you should probably listen to and download Poeta's stuff. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, they're at Poeta US yep. on Poeta. Twitter. US is our website. And then, yeah. Uh, Twitter, Twitter, Face, face Bitch, all yep. that stuff. Yeah. And also, too... Um, then if you guys don't know this already if you guys are more recent listeners our theme song and the couch review theme song was written by anthony dentino cool so happy to be a part he's uh you technically if you want if you think about it you've been a part of this show since the beginning and i couldn't be more honored love it thank you so so yeah i guess i guess we can end on that note now yeah sure yeah let's do it all right guys have a great day and we'll see you for the next episode bye bye